In a recent video, I took a look at this large LED cob array, and someone pointed out that there's an even bigger one still. So I bought one to take a look at, and this one came from a seller called uh, Pan Pan Dash Supermarket and cost $14.72. Um, and is described as a 12 to 14 volt, 200 watt strip flip cob LED panel light, blah, 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 600 LED chips. I have counted there are 600. And a good thing is that it actually was delivered in an anti-static bag. That's quite good. That's unusual. But that's where it all suddenly stops being great. I wouldn't recommend rushing out to buy one of these quite yet because these are... Uh, Arrays tend to have a combination of series and parallel LEDs to make up the voltage, and there's no current limiting. They pretty much rely on the external wiring or a resistor for the current limiting. And uh, as such, the LEDs should be fairly well matched. Well, these ones are not. I'm going to turn the uh, light off, and I'm going to uh, take the automatic exposure here off and you can immediately see at low level that those LEDs are not matched and if I wind this down let's uh, keep nudging it right down it's very distinct patterns it's a repetitive pattern actually in a way I'm seeing distinct lines which uh, correlate to the start of a group of uh, five what I'm guessing are five sections in uh, parallel in each section and then uh, the whole lot, the whole, this section, and then this, and this, and this combined in series. That's what it was before. I shall also be investigating that. Oh, look, at that's quite stylish, isn't it? Looks like a video wall. But uh, let's, uh, let's get the light back on now, uh, now that we've determined that the LEDs are not well matched. And uh, we'll take a look at the current and voltage. Uh, you know, we'll see how the current through it varies with voltage. So I'll be back in a moment once I've set that up. Let's start with some measurements. So from the shortest side of it is 180 millimetres long. That's approximately 7 inches long. The long ways measurement is about 210 millimetres long, which is about 8 and a quarter inch. The active area is about 170 millimetres, which is about 6 and 3 quarter inches wide. And the length, it's not perfectly square is uh, 180 millimetres by about, which is equivalent about seven inches. The LEDs are arranged as 30 in this direction and 20 down in this direction. And after uh, we've tested this, I'm going to actually do what I did in the last one. I'm going to short one of the LEDs out and we'll see how, if we can work out how they're wired in here. So let's bring the meters in. I've got my little dinky cheapo meter here, which is absolutely ideal for the task in hand, which is just a little basic current monitor. And I've got the voltmeter here, and at the moment it's showing 9 volts. I also want to mention, by the way, there's debris in this. It's got dirt underneath the silicon uh, gel with the phosphor in it. I really don't think these are what you might call the best versions out of the factory. I think that's why they might be on eBay. So let's uh, start turning the voltage up until we get some current. So we've got about 20 milliamps there, and at 20 milliamps it's got a slight pattern, LEDs, uh, and they're mostly lit. There's slight variation in colour as well. These ones, looking at them here, look sort of greeny coloured, while these ones are blue. That's probably just the reaction of phosphor and the difference in intensities. It kind of rules out the idea of using this anywhere near 200 watts, because uh, the, the Intent the current mismatch of the LEDs will be horrific. So let's uh, bump it up then. Let's go to let's go to an amp. Let's just not mess around too much. So here's about an amp, and the voltage is as good as 11 volts. Let's go up to two amps. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to get my goggles on here. Yeah, get my goggles on here. My brazing goggles. Two amps. The voltage is 11 and a half volts. Let's go higher. Let's go up to 3 amps. Nudge that back. 4. Yeah, maybe. Nah, about there. 11.9 uh, volts. Let's go to 4 amps. At this uh, point, the panel will probably get quite warm. It, the voltage, the current, should I say, really shoots up with voltage. 12.3 uh, volts for the 4 amps range and this power supply is only rated up to about 5 amps so let's nudge it back to here and it's at 12.61 so uh, I'm not sure 
how well this bodes. I'm going to nudge this right back down so I don't overheat this panel because it's not on any heat sink surface. I don't know how well this bodes for just connecting it across a battery of a car unless you're relying on the cable actually acting as a resistor. If you use thin enough cabling, it's going to get a bit warm, not super warm, but it's going to limit the current. Or you could use resistors, although if you want to run this anywhere near the 200 watt rating, I mean seriously, 200 watts, what's that going to be? Uh, what current is that going to be? If they're, let's make a wild guess, it might go up to 15, uh, 200 watts, that's 200 watts divided by 15 volts equals 13 amps. That sounds about right, probably. So, uh, I don't know, 200 may actually be the rating of what it goes up to when you randomly just slap it across a car battery. I see them selling these panels, well, particularly uh, this smaller panel, with a couple of wires and alligator clips are sticking across the battery, your car battery, as a sort of emergency lighting panel. I think there's a good chance the cable in that is going to be like super minuscule thin. It might even be copper coated aluminium. So they will, in that instance, be relying on the cable as a resistor. Anyway, we've got a, a rough indication of voltage to current ratio. Let's uh, start shorting things out. So I'm going to turn uh, this down to about 9 volts so this doesn't try and bump too much current through the LEDs when I... Let's uh, get this down to 9, and let's start cutting in. So I'm going to go to one of these LEDs. Shall we zoom in here? We shall zoom in here. Shall we focus down more accurately? Yes, we shall. Let's bring in my little cheat sheet for focusing. There, give it something to look at. And let's uh, start slicing around a corner LED. Now, if these are wired exactly the same way as the previous one was, then there'll be clusters all the way down. There'll be a huge block here. And if I uh, short that out, the other LEDs down below should light. Let's just uh, force that uh, bit of silicon off. I'll maybe get a screwdriver in here for this. Oh, I just felt the LED chip. I've just killed the LED chip. That's okay. That's exactly what I intend to do. Kill the chip. Die, you LED, it's now a dead. A DED. Right, okay, let's short this out. And see what happens. So, I've shorted that out. And this cluster of here is lit. That's, diff that's different from the other arrangement then. That is very unusual. Hold on. That's strange. Okay, so when I short this out, it's showing about 9 volts. That suggests that each of these has... These are alternately, possibly, in... Uh, a series array. So this strip here is all in parallel because that whole one was out, wasn't it? Yeah. And then it's in series of these. But that suggests that... Uh, let's zoom back out here. That suggests instead of the blocks as it was before, that uh, it's uh, divided into four sections, but each one has the row of four should I say, the row of 30 LEDs in parallel, uh, four of those, but then wired in series to make up the 12 volts. And the reason the other LEDs weren't lighting there was because um, that was, uh, by shunting that out, it was, uh, do the other ones still remain lit or is it pulling it down? No, it really is pulling that down. I'm going to just nudge the voltage up at the risk to these other LEDs. The other LEDs are coming up now. So, uh, yeah. So that is effectively bridging a lower number of LEDs in series, which is putting the panel out right. Give me a second. I'm just going to do that down. That's the best way of me trying to explain it. Series in parallel always gets a bit complicated when you're trying to explain it like this. So here's how it appears to be wired. I have abbreviated down because otherwise I'd have to draw 600 LEDs. That would take quite some time. There's a bus bar going down either side of this. The negative one at the left-hand side, the positive one at the right-hand side. And uh, the LEDs are wired in the four sections. And each section actually has the parallel row of LEDs 
You should say four parallel rows of LEDs connected in series to make up the 12 volts. And what I did there, when I shorted that one out, I was just bridging across here, which was knocking out that row up there, but the other ones in that uh, circuit were lighting, and the other LEDs were going out because then, because I was running on quite a low uh, voltage, with the uh, current limited by the leads effectively, when those LEDs lit up brightly at this at 9 volts, because uh, the one section was removed, it dragged the voltage across the rails down, so that's why the rest of the LEDs went out. And do you know what? If it is wired this way, then theoretically, if I get the middle here, and the middle between those LEDs, I should be able to drill a hole in this panel. Will I do that? I'm going to go and drill a hole in this right now, and we'll see what happens. So I've just drilled a hole through it, and it's still lit. I did at one point see a glitch. I think I might have bridged things with a, the, a swerve of the metal. So I'm going to try it again. Now, you may be asking, I'm going to go for a 6mm hole this time. This could be tempting fate. Six millimeter hole. Okay, you might ask why I'm even doing this in the first place, because I'm thinking that because that's dead center now, that hole, it would be very interesting uh, putting this camera up here and looking down through that hole and see just how bright it gets. Because that would make effectively a very, very bright ring light. One moment, please. So that's me effectively using this as a ring light now, which means that the objects below it are going to be completely illuminated from all directions. And the slight downside of that, and the thing that stopped me doing this before, is that while it's fine with a matte object this, like this, as is the peril of the film industry, as soon as you bring in anything reflective at all, it's going to swamp out. You're going to actually see a reflection in anything glossy, and it's kind of going to spoil it. You can actually see me holding it at the edge there. Uh, so, uh, it's you know, it could have applications, but unfortunately for the straight down photography on a bench, the light's still better coming from the sides out of the shot of the camera so you don't get direct reflections off anything. Even the logo here will be uh, reflecting light when uh, the thing's directly above it. But you know, it was a worth, uh, worth trying. It's an interesting panel, but I wouldn't run it anywhere near what they are claiming the 200 watts. Uh, at the moment it's running at 2.5 amps at 12 volts, which is about 24, 36 watts, roughly. It's not quite 36, it's not 36, it's about 30 watts, isn't it? Um, so, uh, yeah. It's interesting, but uh, it's nice that you can drill a hole through the middle. Note that uh, don't just go drilling, bumping a hole through whatever panels you get, because that's not the same for most panels, uh, all panels, should I say. It is with certainly with this one that you can drill a hole right dead centre. But uh, it's not guaranteed with all panels. The other one that I had, the narrower one, uh, certainly wouldn't have tolerated a hole being drilled through the middle. It would have actually potentially have killed the panel. Although I reckon you could scrub the uh, the gel off and uh, just bridge solder between the tiny little pads that are being used as bus bars between the LEDs. But that's uh, that's interesting enough. It's certainly it's nice that it provides all round illumination. It's just unfortunately it produces that hot spot on top, and also the heat of the LED panel itself is also going to heat your camera up quite a bit as well. But an interesting, an interesting panel, perhaps not the best, but but interesting nonetheless.